Thanks for joining us for another Travel Talk with Selling Travel. Today, Zeeshan Rashid, Sales and Marketing Manager for the UK and Ireland, will be telling us all about the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel in Florida and what this nature-driven destination has to offer. Hi, Zeeshan, how are you doing today? Hi, Jessica, I'm great, thank you. It's a pleasure, pleasure being here. Great, thanks so much. So before you transport us to sunny Florida, can you start by telling us geographically exactly where the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel is and why its location is such a great selling point? Definitely. So the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel are located in southwest Florida and we're very close to some of the well-known destinations. So we're three hours from Orlando, two and a half hours from Miami, and two hours from Tampa, all by drive. So we're a great twin center with some of these popular destinations. And I always say, as great as those destinations are, they can be quite tiring. And I think, you know, when you come back, you're like, oh, I have to go work tomorrow. I need another holiday. So why not pop over to the beaches? We can have some R&R &R and kind of relax and, and then come back and ready for work. Um, but then also a lot of people just want to come direct to our destination, especially if they're repeat visitors, they want to come straight to the beaches and kind of explore more of our islands. And so we have our own airport, Southwest International, and you can um, fly in direct via any international hub in the US. And it's probably the easiest way to get here because all your checks are done at the international hub. So literally the plane lands, you grab your luggage and you're out straight to the beach. Perfect. And I think especially after all of that theme park excitement, the crowds, you know, we don't really want that too much these days. So uh, to be transported to white beaches and nature just sounds like the perfect combination right now. Exactly. And actually speaking to some agents, is what we've been seeing is that um, families still want to do the Orlando and they still want to do the theme parks, but now they want to do more days on the beach as an add-on. So I think that's, like you said, that's a trend that we're really seeing. Mm -hmm, of course. And um, let's go on to what sets the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel apart from other destinations in Florida. Definitely. So we like to say we are the uncommercial, authentic side of Florida. It's all about unspoiled nature. And um, for us, it's all about immersing in the outdoors and into the nature and doing the adventure activities that come from being such a nature driven destination. Um, so Fort Myers is the mainland. And then after Fort Myers, you have all the islands. So you definitely have to go out and explore the islands. And we say find the island that best suits you. So we'll start with Estero Island. So Estero Island is where Fort Myers Beach is. So not Fort Myers Beach and Fort Myers are two very different locations. And that is kind of your typical Florida. But past there, past there is all about the nature. So for example, you have Cape Coral. So Cape Coral is the largest city between Miami and Tampa and has actually more waterways than Venice. Um, and wow. then you have, I know, so if you're a European person, that's perfect for you. But if you're more about sustainability and being immersing into the nature, then Sanibel Island is the island for you. Um, so Sanibel Island is, um, it has J. N. Ding Darling National Park, which is the largest national park um, in Florida. And um, so Sanibel Island the whole island is to protect what's there and um, and that's the wildlife. So you have over 270 species of birds. Um, turtle nesting season happens from May to October. And of course, in all of our in all waters across all of our islands, you find loads of manatees. Um, what's great about Sanibel, like I said, it's all about the sustainability. So they have um, laws in place such as no building can be taller than the um, tallest palm tree. So that's great, but um, for the environment, but also as a tourist, it means that it doesn't matter what star rating you stay at, everyone gets a beach view. Um, exactly, so I can complain. And then next door to Sanibel is the sister island, Cap Diva. And Cap Diva is very special to me. Um, basically, it's an island adopted by artists and it's very quirky. Um, anything goes in Cap Diva, but a lot of the travel agents, whenever we take them on fam trips, they always say when they get to Cap Diva, this doesn't belong in Florida. This belongs in the Caribbean. And it's true. And it's more about like the landscape. So, you know, wild palm trees, you know, very island life uh, feel. And so it's actually the agents who started saying that we would sell this as the Caribbean alternative. Someone who loves to go to the Caribbean or to the US, but wants a little bit of something different, they would suggest them to go to Cap Diva and Sanibel. 
as well as some of the other places in Fort Myers. Okay, and exactly how many islands are there in Fort Myers and Sanibel? So there's over a hundred barrier islands, but not all of the islands are named and not all of them are mainstay islands, meaning that they don't have um, hotels, restaurants, but there's nothing stopping you from going out and exploring those islands and having your own private island for the day. Yes, and um, we'll actually touch on that now because um, I'm going to ask you what the top recommendations are for a visitor, especially first time visitors. What is there to do? Tell us about some of those experiences. Yeah. So it's, I think for your first time, you really need to be outdoors and you really need to immerse into the destination. And it's all about doing things together. That's why it's such a great family destination. Um, but again, remember it's all about island life. So it's at your own pace. There's no rush to do anything. And um, so I would definitely suggest, you know, you need to go out and explore some of the islands. So island hopping is um, a bit as a must. And so you can do that two ways. You, the Captiva cruises from Sanibel Island, they take you to around some of the popular smaller islands such as Cabbage Key, which is basically the small island with one restaurant and they say only serve a cheeseburger and they say it's the world's best cheeseburger, but there's Jessica, there's no competition. So I guess they're right. <laughs> and um, next door is Keo Costa, which the whole island is a national park. And it's, so it's great for uh, birding and seeing other kind of wildlife. So you can go and explore um, Keo Costa. But what a lot of people like to do is they just rent out a kayak and they go and find a small island and they're on private island for the day. And um, the best thing is that all these islands are in the Pine Island Sound. So if you capsize, you just get up and walk to the island. Perfect <laughs> for family. kids and families. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And um, and you see a lot of families actually from the area doing that on the weekends. Um, and then I was talking about water. We are actually made up of more water than land. So a lot of our activities happen in the water. So paddle boarding and kayak is a must. And all the resorts um, and hotels offer kayaks. Um, and I would say kayak, um, if you're going to kayak, definitely do that and J ending Darling National Park and Sanibel because you can really get into the mangroves and see some of the wildlife but if you want to do paddle boarding I would suggest to go to Lover's Key State Park on Fort Myers Beach um, and they offer morning yoga classes which is not as easy as it may sound to do yoga on a paddle board but it is a yeah. great experience and I think good for the core the very good for the core and um, also um, when you're paddle boarding or kayaking um, manatees they love to come and push you along the way so it, it's a fun experience and I always say don't worry manatees are vegetarians so you'll be completely fine. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the best time of year for the manatees? All year round. Oh they're there all year round. Yeah they're there wow. all year round and we always say that if you don't see a dolphin at least once a day you'll be the first person so you need to let me know if you didn't see a dolphin because I, I won't believe it. Uh, um, and then biking so it's no surprise that um, Sanibel and Captiva being such sustainable focus destinations that they're big biking communities and so bike they have about 100 mile bike trails around the island and it's a great way of seeing the destination because you really get to go through the national parks you get to um, explore the island and then it always ends on the beach and that's where and you can kind of pick up a seashell as a souvenir. Oh environmentally friendly and all natural souvenir that's what we like. Exactly to exactly. And what are your tips for agents selling the destination? Who would they target and when should they go and things like that? Yes, definitely. So what we find is that nature lovers and bird enthusiasts know our destination. So they definitely a target for us, but also families. And like I was saying, um, now families, they want to add more beach days to their Florida holiday. And so that's really important for us because our destination really is about bonding and doing things together. And so it, for families, it's ideal and it's um, perfect. Um, also, you know, it's a great place for um, to just go solo. Like you don't always have to do as a twin center, um, having our own airport. But and a big focus for us really is that we are that unspoiled, uncommercial side to Florida, which is, I think, kind of what everyone's kind of looking for nowadays, the great outdoors. Um, and like I was saying, you know, the Caribbean alternative is also a nice sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great hook, I guess. People wouldn't really associate Florida with nature and wildlife, as you say, but you really exactly. can have it all there. 
yeah Florida is a big state and there's a lot happening it's very diverse mm. and tell me how have you been working with agents throughout the pandemic Yes, yeah, so um, we have our um, trade portal, which is island-findings.com. And um, it's basically on our trade portal is kind of resources you will need to help sell our destination. So we have our online training course, but we also have like a marketing toolkit where you can download imagery for social media, for your um, uh, campaigns and promotions, also like marketing copy, um, and also download brochures um, and like top 10 things to do. So anything that will help you sell the destination. You can also contact me from the contacts page. And what we started doing is offering um, once a week, we host virtual um, training um, classes and they've been really popular. We've only just started this month. They've been, and we've been seeing a lot of agents sign up. So if that's something that's of interest to you, um, you want to do the online training course plus do a virtual where we kind of talk more in depth or if you have any questions for me, I would definitely, definitely do contact me through island-findings.com and we can, we can um, book you into one of our sessions. Um, and if you take our online training course um, by the end of this month, sorry, by the end of August, um, you can be in a chance to win some wireless headphones. Okay, so definitely worth taking that training course. Definitely. Well, thanks so much for talking to me, Zeeshan. And um, yeah, I've learned a lot about the big support Myers and Sanibel and I really want to go, if not yeah, just we... for your background, I need that view <laughs> of my life. Yeah, I need to be back here soon as well. So Jessica, we'll definitely have to plan that ASAP. But thank you so much. I enjoy talking to you and it's been great. You too. Take care. Thank you. Bye.